let's talk about some of these major components uh, that make up a cloud environment. And so from wherever you're sitting, whether you're a consumer of the cloud or whether you're making the cloud or developing the cloud, uh, you have specific needs inside of your environment. And so let's say, for example, you, um, you know, are in a big city here. This is a big city, by the way. Uh, silhouette of a big city, at least, with windows and doors and all that good stuff. Let's say you're in a big city here uh, that requires you to connect, or maybe you're sitting over here in a federal building um, or your workplace or whatever, and you're trying to connect to the internet. The first, excuse me, trying to connect to a cloud infrastructure. The first thing that you're gonna come across within this cloud infrastructure is some sort of orchestrator. Now, many will say, well, isn't that just a web page? And uh, doesn't it kind of do the same thing? You know, for all intents and purposes, uh, the orchestrator is kind of your first purview into the cloud environment. And, and yeah, it is kind of like a web page, right? It's provisioning the environment for you. It runs this automation that you're gonna find within the cloud environment. And see other videos specifically related to what an orchestrator should do. Today, in this video, we're gonna talk about how all of these major components uh, fit together. So the next thing that needs to happen inside of your environment is you have to have something uh, to manage this environment. And when we talk about management of the cloud environment, we're really talking about the ability to provision and deprovision machines, as well as we have to have the ability to say, okay, we have these machines that need to be provisioned and deprovisioned. How do we do that effectively? And how do we manage this environment? Whoops. Um, effectively so that we don't have to do it ourselves, right? And it becomes very, very efficient and cost effective. So, all right. So let's just say management as, an, as a major component. The next thing that we need to be concerned about here and that we need to drive to is the hypervisor itself. All right? And let's go ahead and I keep getting the wrong pin here on my whiteboard. Sorry about that. So we're going to put in a computer here and we're going to have an actual hypervisor. So remember, I've drawn a physical machine and now I've drawn uh, these virtual machines, right? So this is a physical machine right here. This is your physical server, all right? And this is a hypervisor that runs on the physical machine. And that's just a smiley face just to get a smile out of you this morning. But here, this is the virtual machine here. And you may be familiar with some of the technology related to virtual machines. Some of the more popular ones are uh, KVM, for example, or Red Hat, or Microsoft Hyper-V. All of these are virtual machines. So take the physical machine and put a bunch of stuff on it and uh, these virtual machines. And you've got your physical. So the next environment that we need to be aware of is our virtual environment, or what is often called the hypervisor. So this is a major component within our environment as well. And then remember within the hypervisor itself, we have to make sure that it supports the correct network operating system. So don't be confused or don't be dismayed or enamored, I guess would be a better word, by some vendors who offer a KVM, for example, that's not the Red Hat KVM. Red Hat's version of KVM, for example, supports your Microsoft and your Red Hat uh, network operating systems. If you use KVM generic, it's not going to support Microsoft and Red Hat. So you don't want to be putting your payload, a Microsoft payload, on top of a virtual hypervisor that's not supported by uh, Microsoft or Red Hat. That, that just creates risk in your environment. And then the next and kind of the last thing uh, that I'm going to draw out here is flexibility. So, and I'm going to massacre this uh, because I'm not doing a very good job of drawing this. Um, for some of you uh, that are old enough, you remember Gumby. 
and Gumby was the ultimate in flexibility. And so what, we're, what we need to get across here in this section is it has to be flexible. So flexibility allows us to go ahead and connect within the environment to specific applications, right? So we want to be able to connect into things that are going to help us and drive down our costs. For example, we may have a network application in OpenStack called Neutron. And yeah, okay. And then, or we may have our storage environment that um, uses Swift. So we need the flexibility to be able to connect to these applications and allow our orchestrator to interact with all of these components within our cloud environment. So let's review here as we, as we kind of summarize. We want the orchestrator to be able to pipe in to a management environment. And that management environment, of course, is going to manage the hypervisor. So this is kind of step one and step two. They're going to manage the hypervisor. From that hypervisor, they're going to add the flexibility of accessing information and different applications within your environment. Now here's the key, and this is the takeaway from this video. Make sure that your management environment can manage both your standard hypervisors, which are going to be things like uh, you know, VMware and uh, Microsoft and KVM, for example, uh, as kind of the major hypervisors. Make sure that your hype that your manager can directly access uh, this information, but also make sure that your manager can also support OpenStack, which is Nova. So we want to make sure that Nova can communicate directly with the hypervisor as well, and then that hypervisor can directly communicate with those applications, providing you with the flexibility. Don't be, um, don't go down a road where you have to have somebody else's manager, and we'll just use, for example, nothing against VMware here, but let's just say vCenter, for example, as many of you that are listening to this will understand this. vCenter is a hypervisor manager, but we don't want to come out of Nova, for example, from our orchestrator. We do not want to do this. We don't want to do this. Come into vCenter, and then from vCenter, go down to their hypervisor, and then try to translate into this environment. Now, this isn't exactly drawn right, because Nova would actually communicate uh, with the flexibility within the environment. We, we don't want this component. This is going to add cost to our environment. Instead, what we want is we want an environment that allows us to talk to either the, the native manager or to Nova directly. And the one that I would suggest looking at is RevM. So this is Red Hat's version. So the orchestrator talks directly with RevM and directly with Nova. Both of these, with the hypervisor, right, directly communicate with the OpenStack functionality. So now I don't have this mess that I need to go through. I go directly to both of these. And I can do this as a rolling migration. I can do it as a Red Hat rolling migration and move into Nova when I'm ready and prepared and my applications and storage and everything else is, is ready. I apologize for the length of this video, nine minutes. Hopefully this will help you understand a little bit more about how the orchestrator, how the manager, and how, um, excuse me, the orchestrator, hypervisor, manager work. So remember, major components of a cloud environment, the orchestrator, the management of the virtual hypervisors, and then the flexibility that allows us to lower our costs with different applications.